Hi friends, you can watch fire burning, water flowing and another person working forever. A little later you will be able to see the last of these processes, but first a little bit of background. I was recently asked to develop a control system for a belt conveyor of cache terminal and a clear technical task was set. It requires maximum simplicity and high reliability, so that there are no glitches or freezes, no displays or smart functions are needed, just a few control buttons. There are certain things moving along the conveyor belt, let's call them obstacles. When the obstacle reaches the optical sensor, the conveyor immediately switches off and restarts only after the operator removes the obstacle. This is automatic operation. Manual operation is also needed. In this case, the conveyor will start moving only if the operator presses and holds a special button. The obstacle moves along the conveyor, reaches the sensor and stops. The operator removes it, but the conveyor will not start until the operator presses the button again. There should be a manual and automatic mode switch as well as a dual power switch to completely turn off the power. An emergency engine stop button is also needed. If pressed, only the power of the conveyor motor is turned off. It was decided to make the motor control solid state with TRIAC. A conventional relay in such intermittent operation mode isn't even close to TRIAC in terms of reliability. Also, a triac with a colossal power reserve will be used, taking into account the maximum motor power of a couple of hundred watts. The control of the triac is optical, that is, it's galvanically isolated from the high voltage part. All this had to be beautifully designed and made so that, if necessary, it would be possible to quickly produce such things. Therefore, it was also required to make a box. In the project, we should use accessible and inexpensive components. Don't take it as a boycott of microcontrollers, but in such a simple design where all the control a couple of transistors, there is definitely no point in inserting a microcontroller. Optics, a triac, power supply units are needed in any case, and replacing a couple of transistors with a microcontroller is already idiocy, given that the technical specification doesn't require additional options that are difficult to implement using simple methods without a microcontroller. It looks like a simple bubble. But the number of technical processes taking into account the creation from zero is more than seven. Circuit development, simulation, creation of a board template, creation of a physical board, assembly, adjustment, design of the box, printing and final assembly. Believe me, it isn't as easy as it may seem. Initially, I didn't plan to make a video because it's routine, so I didn't film the circuit simulation and PCB creation stage. But then I changed my mind and decided to make a video. Maybe someone will be inspired by a video about the everyday life of a slacker. But before I get started, a few words about the sponsor of this issue, the company NextPCB. This is a huge Chinese factory that manufactures high-quality printed circuit boards according to your drawings. To order boards, simply upload the archive with the original Gerber files to the company's website, select the required option of which there are many, pay for the order and that's all. The company is capable of creating boards of any complexity and number of layers. There is a convenient online Gerber viewer for the final assessment of the board and correction of defects. And various options will allow you to choose the color of the mask, track coating, thickness of the board and copper. Moreover, it is possible to manufacture boards on an aluminium or copper base. You will find a link to the next PCB company website in the description. Well, now, let's go.
Ввиду того, что планы немножко изменились, корпус пришлось переделать. Но зато здесь уже все ошибки учтены. Due to the fact that the plants changed a little, the box had to be redesigned. But here all the mistakes have already been taken into account. Well, so that we don't end up with a silent film, a few words at the end. The device is assembled, all that remains is to close the top cover. And now I want to demonstrate the work. The device has three LED indicators. This green one shows that everything is okay with the power supply. It is connected directly to the output of the main voltage stabilizer. The red LED is connected to the current stabilizer circuit. The current stabilizer powers the laser pointer, that is, if this LED is lit, then the laser is powered. This yellow LED actually duplicates the work of the internal LED of this optocoupler, which directly controls the power semester. Thus, the glow of these three LED can be used to judge the state of the circuit. There are several indicators on the front panel. The device will be attached under the table, so the inscriptions are upside down. This is the power switch, which provides a break both in phase and in zero. This is the choice of the operating mode, automatic or manual. Here will be the emergency stop button for the motor. And this is the manual control button. Regarding the connections, there are four wires coming out of here. One pair is the laser power supply, and the second goes to the photoresistor or any other photodetector. This circuit can be easily converted to work with an IR receiver and transmitter. On the other side, two wires power the conveyor's electric motor. In this case, a small incandescent lamp is connected instead. Another two wires are the connection to the mains 220 volt. This blue multi-turn trimmer allows you to very accurately set the required sensitivity of the photoresistor. Now 220 watt power is turned on. By the way, in my case everything is safe since the power is supplied through a double galvanic isolation system. Please note that two indicators light up at once, red indicating the power of the laser pointer and the main power indicator. Here is connected a small cheap laser pointer, powered by our device. We can make sure that the pointer works. When demonstrating the operation of the device, I will use another pointer simply because it is more convenient. The wires on the built-in pointer are short. The essence doesn't change from this. That pointer is powered by the device and this one by the battery. So at the initial moment, the laser illuminates the surface of the photoresistor and the device is triggered. The power triac is triggered and the motor of conveyor turned on. Along conveyor, the goods are moving. As soon as the goods reach the beam, the beam breaks, the triac closes, the motor is turned off, the conveyor stops, and the operator takes the goods and performs some actions with them. At this time, the beam is restored and the conveyor continues to work. If this switch is set to the auto mode, then regardless of the presence or absence of the beam, this button doesn't work. We switch the switch to manual mode. Note that I directed the beam at the receiver. But nothing happens regardless of the presence of the beam. This will continue until operator presses this button. Press the button, the conveyor moves, the goods reach the beam, the beam is interrupted, the conveyor stops, and so on until next press. But in this case, it is imperative to remove the obstacle. The design is extremely reliable. There is nothing to break here. All control is implemented on two transistors. The stabilizers are absolutely not loaded. The power source is low current. 
That is, there will be no overloads or overheating here. The same applies to the power unit because the semester is 25 amps, but as the load will be motors of 100 to 200 watts. Of course, the laser pointer may break, but I have provided for the following. Firstly, the power supply is stabilized. It goes through the voltage stabilizer to the current stabilizer, specifically to the current stabilizer, and not just to the limiting resistor. Secondly, I have slightly reduced the nominal current consumption of the laser pointer so that everything works safely. And this is the demonstration of the device after installation. Only the laser was replaced with an IR receiver and transmitter.